Welcome back to Mock the Mock, where I take a look at someone else's mock draft. And I mock it. Giving you my thoughts, views, and opinions. And we're looking at the Draft Network today. Our boy, Dre Harris, came out with a new mock. His mocks are always interesting. I suggest you go give him a follow on, on the Twitzke. Check out the article yourself. I'll leave those links in the description. But what's crack lacking? It's your boy, Broshmo. Just in case you did not know, so go ahead, become a bro and subscribe. Leave that thumbs up if you enjoyed the content. As always, let me know what you think in the comment section below. Oh my gosh, everything's 25% off. That's ludicrous. That's wild. That's bonkers. Use promo code ALLBRO25 in all caps to get that 25% off it's much appreciated much obliged but man let's go ahead and get into the nitty gritty man looking at another mock man by the way if you didn't know i got a three round mock out with uh hail mary sports so if you want to check that out then be my guest go enjoy all right let's get into this sucker Oh my gosh, Aiden Hutchinson going number one. Who would have thought Jags went best player available? Some of y'all may be like, I don't know if he's a good fit for the defense. Well, guess what? The Jags are probably blowing it all up. So, yeah, man, a lot can change. But, yeah, nah, Hutch, go with the number who you deem the number one overall pick, whether that's a KT, whether that's an Aiden Hutch. Nah, I'm not lying. I think I think Evan Neal might be getting into territory. So he might be a guy to consider at this point, too. But let's keep it rolling with the Lions. Oh, my gosh. They go KT. Who would have thought? Oh, man, the world. It's so wild. It's so crazy. It's ludicrous. Okay, yeah, nah. They get KT. They get a hell of a defender, hell of an edge rusher, a guy that eats double teams, that forces you to game plan around him. I'm sure the Detroit Lions would love that to add. Uh, add, add some really good pass rush to a secondary that's starting to emerge with some playmakers, man. All right, let's keep this sucker rolling. The Houston Texans. Oh, we're getting wild. We're getting crazy. We're going Kyle Hamilton. Interesting. I think I'd go Evan Neal just because, you know, y'all know the safety position. It's just not a highly sought out one. Doesn't mean I don't think he's a top 10 player. I think he could sneak in the top five. I just don't think it'll be here. I'd probably go Evan Neal. With all things considered, uh, George Karloftis might be an outside shot. Even a David Ajabo. I think one of those edge rushers could probably sneak in. So something to keep an eye out for. Oh, man. My creative cloud is telling me I need to update my Photoshop. I'll do that after the video. Uh, the New York Jets. I imagine Derek Stanley. Derek Stanley. I called it, dude. Ah. Well, I don't know. It's kind of simple. Uh, I guess you could say Evan Nielsen on the board. You could make a case there. And then you could have him and Makai. You could, I don't know what you want to do with George Fant at that point. Uh, apparently, a lot of Jets fans hate George Fant. Okay. <laughs> I think he's playing well enough this year. But again, yeah, he, he's been very pedestrian for a bulk of his career. But yeah, hopefully everything... Um, Checks out well with the ankle. Giants, I imagine this is Evan Neal. Okay, uh, George Karloftis, but they also go Evan Neal. This makes a ton of sense. Ah, perfect. My creative cloud has actually updated itself. Beautiful. Anyway, uh, so they go with the best pass rusher left on the board uh, for some people. Uh, it could be a Jabo. It could be, maybe if you're me, Kingsley and Agbari. Hashtag bars, baby. I'm spitting. I'm spitting hot fire. Uh, but Evan Neal is kind of a no-brainer. Uh, getting help on that defensive line. Offensive line, excuse me. Uh, getting protection for DJ or maybe it's Fromm. I don't know. We'll see. But, yeah. No, and then pass rush getting – like and I like that this his style of uh, – his style of pass rushing. It's wildly different than Aziz Ojolari. So, I like that. I like that quite a bit. Uh, let's keep it rolling. Is this the Jets? No, it's the Panthers. They go Matt Corral. So Matt Corral dropped a little bit in my rankings just because I don't think he's very pro ready. But uh, oh my gosh, he's not the biggest. Nor oh nor to, okay. I was like, did he just say he had the strongest arm over Malik? I don't think so. But uh, like the guy's a playmaker. When you allow him to cook, he cooks well. 
Uh, it is a one to two read offense there at Ole Miss. Lane Kiffin, you know, he he makes it easy on these on the quarterback there. So yeah, having to go through progressions might be something he he needs to be taught. But also at the same time, he's very good um, when he when he's forced outside of structure. The escapability is very nice. He keeps his eyes downfield. So I don't think that'll be too tough. Uh, the size of people might be worried. I just don't think he's nearly as accurate downfield as like a Sam Howe. Uh, but, ah, uh, yeah. I mean, I don't know. These quarterbacks are going to shuffle around. It'll be interesting. I'm not going to fault anyone who has Matt Corral as their top guy. Cause honestly that could, that could be the case for me. Maybe after the senior bowl, like maybe Pickett, Willis, they all look like dog water. Sam Howe continues to just kind of like, oh, man, now that he does have – and I imagine, dude, if he goes – I don't know. I don't think he's Ill, he's actually not eligible for the senior bowl. That sucks because that guy, dude, we saw what he's like when he had talent around him. The guy was a monster, but now, like, you talk about how, oh, we want a guy that can elevate their team. I thought he did a good job of keeping that North Carolina team that was devoid of talent outside of Josh Downs. Uh, the offensive line was terrible. Like, I thought he did a good job of keeping that team relevant in games. But, yeah, I think we've talked enough. Panthers, they go quarterback. This could be tackle. They could trade down just to acquire more picks. And then they could probably honestly take another take a quarterback if they trade down. So, Panthers could be a, a big trade down option. The Jets go, James, I don't hate this one bit. Jameson Williams. Listen, you got Corey Davis on the outside. We all know. Sala and company apparently hate Denzel Mims. I don't know. It just is what it is. But uh, holy moly, dude. Can imagine Elijah Moore, a guy you could flip. Like him and Williams, you could constantly flip those guys from the slot to the outside. Like, this is scary when you got guys that can stretch the field like this. You got a good contested catch target in Corey Davis. I'm not opposed to this. I kind of like it. I know. Joe Douglas, uh, he likes the trenches, but we're addressing corner wide receiver, which I think is just in, just as important, maybe if not more valuable. I think wide receiver is exceptionally valuable. Uh, and corner is probably, uh, you could make an argument that pass rush is more valuable than, than the corner position. I think I, I, it could really go either way, but... Yeah, no, th I'm not against this. I like this. Uh, Falcons? What do you do? DeMarvin Leal. So they get a nice versatile playmaker. It'll be interesting to see how he looks at the combine. Just because um, I know he kind of put on a little bit, I think a little bit of bad weight uh, as the season went on, as they were using him more on the interior. So I think you give him a nice off-season process where he gets to like lean, lean up that bad weight. And he comes in, look, I bet you, I bet you he comes in weighing at like a 297 to 300 at the combine. And then he's just like twitchy as hell because by that time he's just like thick. But, uh, yeah, no, I like this. This is, you get a good versatile player. I like that. I don't mind it. At nine, it feels a bit rich, but again, we could be looking at this wildly, like we could look at this very different, um, after the combine. This is the first Eagles pick. They go David uh, Jabo. So, uh, yeah, no, the guy's stupid dynamic, length, uh, athleticism. It's going to be very appealing. And, I mean, for a team like the Eagles that, like, they, you don't necessarily need him to come out and be an immediate starter. You, they, I imagine maybe Brandon Graham will still be with the team. Um, I don't think he could be a cap cut casualty. I don't know if that happens, but... Um, they probably bring Sweat back. I think they've already extended Sweat, actually. And Sweat's a good rotation piece. And he's actually shown to be a good replacement starter, I think. But, yeah, no, he doesn't need to start immediately. I don't think so, at least. Kenny Pickett going to the freaking Saints. I don't think Saints go with a rookie quarterback. Is this the class to really... I mean, honestly, he's the most pro-ready if you're going to build around him because that defense is ready to win a Super Bowl now. Like, that defense is so underrated for the Saints. Probably not underrated anymore, let's be honest. But uh, they do need to get more weapons. I do think the guard position is, needs an overhaul. Um, like, Pete's not good. Throckmorton struggled. 
he's more of a depth guy anyway. And even Cesar Ruiz has kind of struggled. Um, because I, I honestly I think they should move Ruiz uh to center and kick McCoy out to guard, which he's totally okay with. So, but I think they, they really need some firepower. That's kind of like the most pressing need. But getting Kenny Pickett, a guy who can extend plays if he needs to on his feet, uh, a guy that can, has an NFL arm in terms of strength, he can uh, attack all levels of the field, and he's relatively, like, at, pretty accurate. So, yeah, not bad. Uh, Vikings go Jordan Davis. Listen, this is... I don't think my I don't know, man. Mike Zimmer probably sticks around because he somehow gets the Vikings to the playoffs, or they're at least touching, they're touching, they're kissing. No, oh, they could kiss the playoffs there at week 17 and then blow it somehow. But if he ends up there, maybe because like Michael Pierce has been unhealthy, maybe they decide to move on from him. And we know he likes the his interior to be meaty. He likes them as gap penetrators. Uh Jordan Davis kind of fills the role there. Dude's imposing size. Paired next to like a Dalvin Tomlinson, like, like the pick makes sense. Does it make it a good pick? I'm not that high on Davis, so for me, no. But no. some people really do like him. Conditioning could be an issue in the future. Hell yeah, I can. I think he's a two down player. Uh, Raiders go icky. Oh hell yes, they go sticky icky. Kick, kick, Mister uh, Leatherwood to guard. I think that might work out to his benefit anyway. Uh, worst case scenario, Akem ends up being a Boehner guard, but give him a shot to play tackle because this guy's been remarkable this year for the Wolf Pack. Oh, I don't know why I did that. Okay, I was just making sure my dog didn't look at me. It was like, all right, we doing this? We howling? But um, no, I like this, dude. The tackle class is kind of falling. Charles Cross still on the board as well. Who's up next? Uh, Eagles. They go Booth. This would be the second corner off the board. I, yes, I do believe. Again, we've been talking this to death. The guy finished the year hot last four games. He's going to probably test out real well. So, yeah, he probably gets in that top 15 area. Uh, Broncos, Charles Cross. He hates the rest of the quarterback class, apparently. I think Sam Howe, this is a good spot for him. Uh, we'll see. But Cross ends up being, I guess, the right tackle. In this case, because they'll have Boyle on um, Bortle. Boyle? Bortle? Oh, my gosh. Why can't I think? I, all I have is freaking Blake Bortles in my head now. Bowles. Oh, my gosh. Thank you. But got him at left tackle. Uh, he still needs to get stronger. Yeah, but I love the athleticism. Like, especially in, a, in the Broncos running scheme where they use a variety of different. Like, they like the gap. The gap uh, running concepts. They like zone. They like to pull their guys to the uh, uh, other side. And that really fits for a cross who's exceptional as an athlete. So it's a, I think it's a good fit. Still, I would probably go with the quarterback, though. Uh, Pittsburgh Steelers. Kenny and Green. Wow, he really does hate the... Uh, really does hate the, uh, <laughs> the quarterbacks in this class, I guess. Uh, except for picking in uh, Corral. But Kenny Green's a good fit. If they don't go quarterback, this is a guy that can play any position they need him to, uh, whether it is the left tackle, right tackle, left guard, right. Well, it's probably not left guard because Kevin Dotson got that on lock. But right guard, maybe even center if they want to move Kendrick Green out. He is what they're kind of looking for now in their offensive line in terms of being a bit more athletic. That's why they got a guy like Kendrick Green. So, yeah, no. It's it's uh it's good it's good it's good especially if you don't like the quarterback class, the Browns Desmond holy freaking a dude this okay for one if a team's willing to take quarterback at seventeen I think and by the way I'm higher than two other quarterbacks in this class than I am with Ritter um why wouldn't why why would Steelers or Broncos jump on the quarter on oh Desmond Ritter. I don't know, but I, Baker's kind of want a prove it deal. I'd rather go into next year if he totally bombs and maybe try to invest in that quarterback class because this team is very good. They have a lot of good pieces, uh, and they're setting themselves up for the long term if they decide, hey, we need a new play caller or a new signal 
caller. Is that what I'm looking for? New passer. Let's just go with that. Uh, I think it's better to look at next year's class. And then knowing you have a ton of resources, draft capital, that you don't necessarily need. So if you want to make a move for Bryce Young, CJ Stroud, a uh, variety of other guys that might maybe elevate um, to that to the top portion of that class, like a Grayson McCall, um, Phil Dracovic, uh, uh, who else we got? Will Levis, uh, Bo Nix, just playing Spencer Rattler. Like, dude, yeah, no, I I don't mind that, like, cause. You can, they can make a move into the top 10. Maybe they're working with a top 10 pick and maybe they want to trade like further up. Like, yeah, no, I, I think I wouldn't go quarterback here. And also, I'm not that high on Ritter. A lot can change again. If he performs exceptionally well in the playoffs, doesn't even need to like win that game against Bama. But if good performance there shows shows out at the senior bowl, then yeah, man, maybe I'm more willing. But like, he's a guy that I just don't. I feel like the accuracy ball placement, it's probably it's not as good as guys like guys like Corral, How, Will well uh let's not go with Willis. Well we're not, you know what Willis when he puts it on the it's the decision making with Willis. When he puts it he, this is a man that can put it on the money. Go watch that Eastern Michigan game, that bowl game. This dude, he was he was putting on the money. Oh my gosh! Like again, there's so much, so much with his mechanics improved this year with Willis. But regardless, I dropped my pencil. Not like I'm writing down anything, but I like to have something in my hand. Uh, but yeah, now nah, I'm not really behind the Browns going quarterback when Baker's on a fifth year, his fifth year option. Uh, Roger McCreary going to the Ravens. Really good scheme fit. Uh, they get a another. Press corner that you can kind of put on an uh, island if you need to. Marlon Humphrey, Marcus Peters, they both have the ability to kick into the slot. So you got this, ver you could do a variety of different things. We saw how important cornerback depth has been this year when teams like the Ravens and the Bucks have just been banged up. So yeah, man, I don't mind grabbing more talent there. Washington football team, here's Malik Willis. They go with the project, probably needs a year to kind of like chill which is nice he doesn't have to start right away with taylor heineke but yeah no 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 this makes a ton of sense i like it buffalo bills i don't know if i like this drake london because like gabriel davis dude's been showing out he's been like hey now that emmanuel sanders has been kind of hurt i think he's proven to be to honestly to be the wide receiver too there with Diggs. You got, uh, excuse me, Beasley in the slot. Like, I like Drake London. He's different uh, compared to what they have there at receiver. But I just don't th – I'd rather, I'd rather go cornerback two. Uh, I'd rather go with maybe the def offensive interior, which you got Linderbaum on the board, right? I think so, maybe. So maybe he can go here. But, I mean, uh, you got Mitch Morris there. It's really the guard position that needs addressed. Maybe you kick Linderbaum to guard. Uh, I get a little queasy when my guards are sub 300. You can kind of get away with that at center, but uh, guard, man, it's a little bit tougher. Um, I mean, you already, you, you already got the beefy Jordan Davis off the board, so can't really get a run defender. The linebacking class, get an uh, upgrade over Tremaine Edmonds. So I feel like there's a variety of different ways they should probably go. That's not receiver. Oh, uh, Miami Dolphins. Dude, Tyler Linderbaum's still on the board, right? Or did I just miss that? All right, I'm not going to lie to y'all. I would have gone Linderbaum. I love Garrett Wilson. Totally would be a pick I make. I mean, okay, you know what? Him and Linderbaum are close enough on my big board for me to be like, you know what? I might go with Wilson because I think... Uh, Linderbaum seven, Garrett Wilson's eleven, and you could obviously the wide receiver position is a bit more valuable than an offensive interior player. And I have been preaching I don't want the Dolphins to get younger on the offensive line, but Linderbaum is one of those exceptions that I've given. So yeah, again, I I, I don't mind this. I think you could kind of talk yourself into this pick over Linderbaum. Uh, Jermaine Johnson coming in. Ooh, 
he is the next edge off the board that's wild dude's good man dude's good um i don't think he's that i don't i don't think that he's like the most explosive guy in this class but in terms of raw strength and just have his way with whoever lines up against him that's kind of him so i mean yeah dude if getting some more pass rush that's just not joey bosa i think is kind of kind of clutch uh you could also make a case for the cornerback two spot trent mcduffie's on the board i think is a really good scheme fit here he would have been a good scheme fit for the bills too but uh let's see what the eagles final pick is because what they have gone booth and a jabo so maybe this is where we see the linebacker uh no 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 okay okay hey to be fair the eagles they haven't drafted a linebacker in the first round in quite some time so going brisker with uh anthony harris currently uh on one uh, on a one-year deal brisker is pretty solid safety i think he's gonna be very good a guy that eats up everything underneath and he is a very savvy player in coverage he won't let himself get beat get burnt over the top but the guy's good the guy's good he's like adrian amos john J johnson anytime he's mentioned in a video i gotta bring up those those are just good comps detroit lions i imagine receiver chris olave they get the burner they get the burner and chris olave it'd be interesting to see where Traylon burks goes let's keep it rolling Bengals. they go trevor pennon uh, i've told y'all hey I'm willing to like I'm willing to put guys like Trevor Pennant and Bernhard Raymond in the first round. Just I'm gonna wait till the senior bowl, see how they perform. Uh I did the same thing with Dylan Reduns. Uh and I ended up really liking him. I gave him a first round grade and he fell in the second round. Who would have thought? But uh yeah, uh wait and see. But I understand grabbing another tackle, Riley Reeves on a one year uh deal. You could go corner. I like the idea of going corner, especially with the corners kind of falling here. But I do understand that corners prob. Well, corner and tackle are actually some of the deeper positions in this class. Uh, that's not edge because edge is just ridiculous this year. Uh, the tight ends go Devin Lloyd. They go with a linebacker. Brown, Evans, they're probably out this year. Uh, Monty Rice is fine. I like Monty Rice. I don't mind moving forward with Monty Rice, but uh, Devin Lloyd is just... One. This is a guy that can be a blitzer, that can be a guy that rushes off the edge. He's going to be a good run stuffer. He is very good at, uh, with short area quickness, he can get out to the flats uh, real quick. Uh, and that wingspan is going to be a nightmare in coverage for uh, for passers. Cardinals, Travon Walker? No, Ahmad Gardner. Forgot he was on the board. Wow, these corners did fall. This is a good pick. Sauce, I like Sauce a lot. He's number 12 on my big board, I believe. 12 or 13. Cowboys go Traylon Burks. What the flip? Dude, rich get richer, dude. This is wild. Depending on how he tests out, man, I think he goes a lot, maybe a lot higher than this. But yeah, I guess Gallup on the way out. But dude, Burks, CD, and Cooper are, that's wild. That's just wild. I think I would go with one of the corners or the, uh, would I go with one of the corners? I mean, Kyrie Elam, yeah, I think I might go with Elam, but, uh, or even a Jordan battle, but wow, dude. I mean, that's scary. I'll say that. That's scary. Jahan Dotson going to the Patriots. He's a little bit different than what they do have currently at the receiver position um guy's quick he's competitive especially at the catch point he's got some bunnies uh i mean uh, it just doesn't feel like a patriots pick they let's be honest they're trading out they're trading down uh the buccaneers go trayvon walker this is kind of like their will uh goals william goldston uh, and a dominic the dominic and sue uh replacement so yeah, man, nah, he, he would be asked to do a very similar thing to what he's been doing at Georgia, though he has dropped back in coverage quite a little bit, but that's great for Todd Bowles, man. He could get really creative with this defense, which, I mean, he already has, but it, I think it's a good fit.
Uh, 31. The Chiefs go Trent McDuffie, dude. He's not a good... I don't think he's a good scheme fit. Oh, I don't think he's a good scheme fit, man. He, I don't think he has the length. He's not. I don't think he's going to be a guy you want to press man a lot. It's just not a good scheme fit for the Chiefs. Sorry, I don't like it. Probably This is probably the pick I, I, I dislike the most. Maybe. Maybe. Uh, Packers. Darion Kennard. Offensive line. Grabbing more depth. Okay, sure. Why not? Um, are there any sexier picks here? I mean, receiver, but all the receivers kind of went off the board. There's, uh, I mean, Nakobe Dean didn't come off the board. Why not get Nakobe Dean? That would be kind of fun. I mean, you could go with one of the edge talents that have kind of fallen, Kingsley and Agbari. Yeah, I mean, I feel like there's other ways it could go. Kennard is a guy that's... I don't know. He's listed at 50 on my big board. Maybe drop him down a little bit. I think I'm going to throw Zion um, Johnson ahead of him. Uh, I don't know, man. I'm... I'm at a loss. I don't I don't think this is it. But uh, let me know what you think in the comment section below. That's it for the video. Go ahead and do that YouTube thing. Show our boy Dre Harris some love. And until next time, you be easy, my friends. Later.